Apocalypse, Chapter 1, No Friendship Here. Nay, stay away, creatures! Princess Luna kept her elder sister wrapped protectively in her grasp as she glared wearily and weakly up at the creatures that stood before her. They were not like anything that she'd seen in her return to Equestria, nor in her time before Nightmare Moon. They were animals, she assumed, or at least successors to a species much like ponies are to the horses. The four stared back at her, either in shock or in severe confusion and disarray, and their weapons lowering as they took her as non-threatening compared to what they've been through. After a moment, the one with the heaviest looking weapon shouted, What in the actual hell is this? The others then questioned further, Are those horses? The fuck is up with their colors? Are those crowns? Or are they magical talking horse princesses? Luna fumed at being called a horse, but kept her tongue sedated of insults. It was of little doubt that these apes were confused, and have never seen the likes of her and her sister, but she still protected her sibling with cautious gazes, struggling to ignite her horn to cast defensive spells. She scooted back as one of them took a slow step forward, getting a better look at her and her elder sibling, before turning and glancing at Twilight and Cadence. The former of the two barely able to comprehend and adjust to her new surroundings. She barely looked any more than catatonic, but was able to recuperate and blink herself back to reality. Wait a second, a hoof? But, no, no, we should be- She turned her eyes up to the humans that stood before her. They were different than the ones at Canterlot High. In fact, this whole place seemed completely off compared to the altered reality of the kingdom. The foundation of it all, the, the way everything seemed more detailed, it certainly wasn't familiar, like home. Even the humans that stood before her, they didn't bear the same aspects as the one that she knew beforehand in her last adventure through the mirror. Gone were the array of skin colors that matched the pony that they were in Equestria. Now, they were tanned, and perhaps a little bit taller than the average adults, like Principal Celestia. The added weaponry was also a curious, yet intimidating change. Groaning as she stood up, she ended up on her haunches as she gathered her bearings. Rubbing her head as a fleck of embers drifted past her vision, she watched it go, tracing it all the way to a horrific sight. Sweet Celestia. A burning and collapsing city greeted her as her eyes got their focus back. Screams and sirens echoed from down the streets, and even passing the hotel that she appeared on top of. Wait a minute. She stood up, ignoring the queasiness in her stomach as she looked around frantically, failing to notice Celestia and Cadence now coming back to the land of the living as well. Where's the mirror? Luna's ear flicked as she too turned her head to and fro. Their only means of escaping this plane of existence was nowhere in sight, and it made her breath hitch in her throat as the imminent instinct of danger pumped blood through her veins harder and faster from her heart. And all this time, the four humans had formed up before them, watching with curious eyes, as they moved and spoke, like, well, them. Sharing several concerned looks with one another, all of them flinched when hearing a sound behind them that made their blood run cold. The inventor swiftly turned around, widening his eyes as he saw the door to the rooftop they entered from, shake and tremor from the pounding hands and fists coming up against it. With every hit, it bent and shifted outwards, letting the inhuman screeches of the undead escape through the cracks. Backing up towards the ponies, Twilight helped Cadence up, as Celestia drearily opened her eyes, as if she was coming off an anesthetic after surgery. The bounty hunter looked down at the ponies, eyeing them all before turning to the purple one. Can you four get up and run? Twilight looked up at him, nodding as Cadence was shaking off the daze. However, Celestia jolted her long neck up when she saw the monstrous rotting humans reaching up through the door at them, howling and roaring out their plea for flesh. Soon the door gave way on the top hinge, making the rest of it come down onto the concrete. The hordes spilled through the doorway, falling on one another and shambling back to their feet to rush at the group of eight. Luna, Cadence, and Twilight backed away from these monsters as the bounty hunter grabbed Celestia by her neck ornaments, yanking her to her hooves. Come on, move it, horse lady! He shoved her along as they all booked it without question towards the slope turning into the hotel's parking garage. The engineer, inventor, and bounty hunter led the group, the scientists following in the back while the princesses were in the middle. He turned back and fired at the swarm, putting holes in a few of the once living humans' heads before rushing back after the others. Split up into pairs, the princesses stood closely by the humans they escaped the roof with as more of these rotten counterparts were bleeding from every section of the parking garage. Luna, with the Engineer, shaking, stood firm to defend herself, though didn't need to, as with a firearm, the Engineer also had a kitchen knife acquired from the hotel's buffet on the third floor. He gashed a living corpse's face in half, before stabbing it into another one's head. 
Gasping as they were surrounded, he acted quickly to get him and the blue horse thing out of harm's way. Twilight and Caden stayed behind the scientist and the inventor as the latter shoved one of the damned humans to the ground, wrestling with another till his companion blasted it through the eye. Taking out his own acquired melee weapon, the inventor cleaved a fire axe through a third necromantic being, leaving it behind as they backed up away from the horde lumbering towards them. Celestia, still trying to snap herself away, could do nothing with her experience, as the bounty hunter was expertly holding back the line that was crawling ever so closer to them, dropping the dead like flies in a bug zapper. When he ran out of ammunition for the Glock 22, he ushered the largest horse princess of the four towards the doors behind them, where everybody else converged and retreated to. The engineer shoved a shell-shocked cadence through the entrance as the rest of the ponies followed after. A rogue undead sprinted around the corner in pursuit, but was blasted to bits by the inventor before the scientist slammed the door shut. Buying them mere seconds, they raced down the hallway, the princess is all panting and scared beyond what any pony in their world would ever see. They didn't understand what was happening, and the danger and threat of a mortifying death kept them going blindly with these tamer humans as they seemed to oppose these monsters that were their faces. Slowing down as more of these undead creatures were in the hallways, the scientists strode forward, firing once ahead before turning and doing so again behind them, taking out two of the thin crowd. The engineer stabbed his knife through a dead man's skull, losing it as the body dropped. The bounty hunter, seeing more coming down the steps, fired at them, once he reloaded his weapon, popping their heads like melons. Seeing only one more in their path, the inventor grabbed another fire axe from its casing and literally threw it at the last walking corpse. With every obstacle out of the way, the inventor, putting his hand on Celestia's back, pointed ahead at a room. There! Get to the security offices now! Not needing to be told twice, every living soul sprinted for the finish, hopping inside the room and shutting the door just before the horde at the parking garage got in. With their trail masked without sight, the group was finally able to breathe as the horde either split up or went past the security offices. However, as a just-in-case procedure, the engineer and bounty hunter siblings worked together to barricade the door as quietly as possible using server racks, empty ammunition cabinets, and a trash barrel to block the only way in and out of the offices of security. Once they had the last bit of the barricade set up, they slumped away, exhausted from the run for their life. The inventor, leaning against the wall, looked around at everyone. So, we still got our fingers and toes? Oh, and, uh, hooves? As if to answer that question, the scientist turned his attention to the four princesses, who were trying to console one another after having escaped from the most horrifying experience of their life. Walking over to them, he didn't care that they reeled and twitched away from them. He needed to make sure. Are any of you bitten? None of them spoke up, though Celestia was forced to look at him as he put a hand forcefully under her chin. Hey, look at me! Are you bitten? Scratched? Anything? He checked over to Celestia, top to bottom, before moving to the others, not caring once again about consent. Once he was sure that they were fine, he sighed, looking back at the others. They're clean. Clean? The bounty hunter ushered to them. What the hell even are they, fucking technicolored horse thingies? Uh, excuse you? Cadence returned his narrow stare with her own, frowning at the red-clad human disappointedly. We are ponies, Mr. Tall Red Creature, so please stop calling us the H-word. The bounty hunter rose an eyebrow at the pony, referring to the word horse as the H-word. Still fuming and confrontational, Luna spun around to face the four humans. What, what in Equestria is going on? We come to your land to spread magic and friendship, and we're greeted to death and chaos to the worst degree? Explain yourselves! The engineer walked past them as the inventor rose up his hands. Hey, hey, cool your jet star hair. We're not that informed on this either. The bounty hunter shook his head as he rested his arm on one of the barricade shelves. We were attacked this morning in our respective hotel rooms, and we don't even know what's going on. It's, it's like the whole hotel had gone insane. No, we were lucky to find these guns on the officers that had already died in the lower levels by those... fucking... things. The scientist rolled his eyes. You don't have to sugarcoat what they are, Raymond. It's clear to anybody that they're just the undead. The bounty hunter scoffed. Yeah, but actually saying that they're zombies is ridiculous, Will. This isn't any damn game or movie. I wouldn't be too sure about that, brother. The bounty hunter and scientist turned to the engineer as he was staring up at a TV hanging on the wall. On it was the Channel 6 News, and the subtitles were enough to make the inventor snatch a remote and turn up the volume. The princesses, seeing their sudden alarm, joined them. At first, they marveled at the advancements that they made with simple screen technology, especially Twilight, who had a lab full of the most advanced equestrian technology of the modern era. Soon, curiosity and wonder turned to horror, 
as they heard and saw what was before them. Government has started to do something on this ongoing revolt. However, the politicians- Wait, hold on, they're calling this a revolt? The engineer took the remotes, flipping the channel to an emergency news coverage channel, where they were outside on the streets a little ways away from the hotel. The number of deaths in the northern sector of San Francisco already exceeds 10,000. The prefectural governor has declared a state of emergency- Everybody and every pony flinched as the camera moved at the sound of a gunshot, focusing on the officers unloading their own handguns into the moving bodies inside body bags. That was gunfire! Just now the police opened gunfire! Jeffrey, what are they shooting at? The camera shook before falling to the ground. The camera guy getting tackled to the ground while the reporter screamed and thrashed as multiple of the undead forced her onto her back, dogpiling on top of her in front of the camera and turning her into a living bundle of meat ripe for the taking. No, no! Get off of me! Ow! Get away! Help! After the camera was kicked around a few more times, the feed suddenly went to static. It then transferred back to the studio where a shaky news anchor woman was handed another document. Gulping, she steeled her nerve as she turned to the camera. The, uh, there, there's been some sort of problem, and from now on, we'll be broadcasting from the studio here. Um, as you can tell, this situation outside has become grave. We advise you to please stay in your home unless it's absolutely necessary to come outside. Once it's safer outside, we'll bring you more information about the ongoing situation. The ponies in the room were frozen stiff at what they saw, and to an extent, so were the four humans, but that didn't stop the engineer from flipping the channel again. This unusual phenomenon has spread rapidly throughout America and has yet to be brought under control. The government authorities have evacuated the White House and will relocate to a command center on board an aircraft carrier. There are reports that this transfer is in preparation for the possible use of tactical warheads. We have currently lost contact with Moscow, and Berlin is in flames while France has maintained order, but there are reports of Static rolled over the screen as the engineer started flipping channels again, finding each one to be just the same. Jesus Christ. This is happening everywhere. The whole world's gone to shit in less than four hours. The bounty hunter took off his hat, putting his hand up to his forehead as he sat down. The princesses, mortified by what they heard and witnessed, could only share their sympathies and fear with these young human stallions. What they've just experienced is happening in greater ferocity all across this kingdom and others. Celestia then closed her eyes, not wanting to imagine something like this happening back on her soil. Her little ponies just reduced to monsters by a trivial parasite that may as well be spread through a cough. The engineer put down the remote, licking his lips, as if he wanted to vomit. Everything was in shambles, the home he knew was no more, and to top it all off, people were fucking eating each other. This, this has got to be some sort of goddamn trick. Cadence walked up beside him, her eyes giving a caring aura as they stared up at him. Surely this won't go on forever, right? Things will get right back to normal in no time. No. At least they all got a break now, but I got a feeling that something big is gonna pop up in their faces. Anyway, let's get on to our bosses of donators. Top donators, Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, and Pony Man. Courier Crucii, Strix, Sar630, Delta Omega, Runescythe9852, Dospo, Ryan A. Dragonwolf, Hunter Norman, Austin Rowan, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Cerberus, Goulash Eating Hazar, Ron and Wandering, Ender I63, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David E. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F., Rainbow Dash, Teal'c Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakow, Mr. ECU, Leslie Prickett, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, and Vizuri. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.